Hey there y'all, today we're going to look at the review for Unit 4. We're going to look through, back through all that we've done in this unit. It's been a while, but we've got everything that we're going to have for this test coming up. So let's first look at 4.1, and that was on interpreting linear functions. And our objective there was to identify the key features of a graphed linear function. And remember, our main key features are the slope, the intercepts, and what type of equation it's written in, the slope-intercept form, the standard form, or the point-slope form. So remember those three items there, right? So slope, is it increasing, decreasing? Is it positive slope or a negative slope? Constant. Remember that vertical lines are undefined in their slope. And then where are the intercepts? And what type of equation does it have? Is it in slope-intercept form, standard form, point-slope form, or is it not in any of those forms and we need to convert it? In 4.2, we talk about slope and rate of change. And remember that we're going to be able to find the slope given two points and find the rate of change of an applied problem. And so remember that slope, our slope formula, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. We will list our order pairs, write them out, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and find our slope. We're also going to be able to do that from a word problem, picking out the information in the problem, understanding what is the X in the problem. In like this problem here, the X was the grade and the Y was the weight. And we want to understand that slope is the Y over the X, the change in Y over the change in X. And so that was section two on rate of change and slope. In 4.3, we looked at horizontal and vertical lines. We wanted to identify horizontal and vertical lines, be able to write their equations, and determine the slope of them. Now we talk about the slopes back in section two, where we talk about the slope of a horizontal line being zero and a vertical line being undefined. But remember that when we look at those horizontal and vertical lines, we need to remember that it's all about which axis does it cross. If our line crosses the y-axis, it is going to be y equals the value where it crosses the axis. If it's crossing the x-axis, like a vertical line here, then it's x equals whatever value that is. So x equals negative 2, or x equals positive 8. Okay? So again, horizontal lines, y equals number. Vertical line, x equals number, because it's crossing that axis. Don't get confused on which way those go. So in section four, we looked at how to use intercepts and also look at standard form. We want to be able to identify and use intercepts in a linear relationship. And so in section four, we saw that standard form is ax plus by is equal to c. And we use that to be able to find the intercepts that we have. Remember that the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, and we can solve our equation by plugging in 0 for x to find the y-intercept, that's this side, and solving, plugging in 0 for y to solve for x, that's this side. And remember that we get two separate points on the coordinate plane, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. In section 5, we looked at point-slope form. And we want to be able to use point slope form to graph the function and model real world linear relationships. And so remember that point slope form is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. This is the one where both the y's are on the same side, both the x's are on the same side, and the m is along with the x's. And so we're able to take our slope, either given to us or that we find, and one ordered pair and plug it in to this equation to be able to find the equation of the line. And so here we had 3, negative 4, we had a slope of 6, and we substitute our pieces in to get the equation of the line in point slope form. Remember, if a question asks you for point slope form, this is where we stop. We're not going to simplify this any further other than to simplify any double signs. Okay, so looking at section six, that's where we looked at slope intercept form. And slope intercept form being the y equals mx plus b. And so remember that is the special case where we've solved it for y 
and we have the y-intercept staring us in the face right here. So if we had like the example here, y equals 2x minus 5, our slope is the 2 and the negative 5 is our y-intercept at 0, negative 5. And again, we can pull that information from the equation and graph it, or we could look at the graph and pull that information out, that's what we did in section 8, to be able to write that equation. But before we get to section 8, let's look at section 7 on parallel lines. Remember that we want to be able to find the slope of a parallel line, and we also be able to write the equation of a line parallel to and through a given point. And so in this section, remember that parallel lines have what? Parallel lines have the same slope. So if the first line has a slope of two-thirds, the parallel line has to have a slope of two-thirds. And so what we're looking at in the end, the biggest thing here is being able to take a point that we're given and a line and said, hey, we want a new line that's parallel to the old line that goes through this point. Well, we are given a point. Our slopes here, remember the slopes have to be the same. So original slope is three. The new slope, the parallel slope is also three. Taking the point and the slope, we plug it in and we get the equation. Again, we could stop at point slope form or we could continue on through and solve it all the way into slope intercept form. In section eight, we look at writing linear functions and we want to be able to use graphs, tables, verbal descriptions to be able to write a linear function. And remember, we're going to take all that information and whatever form is given to us, we want to either plug it into slope intercept form if we know the y intercept or plug it in to point slope like example two here and then be able to solve it into a certain form. Again, we could solve it into point slope form and stop there, or we could solve it all the way down into slope intercept form and even write it as a function with an f of x or g of x, or whatever the function notation may be. Finally, in section nine on comparing linear functions, remember that we are comparing the different components slopes, y-intercepts, domain and range. We're looking at all of those things that we've talked about in unit three and unit four and saying, hey, here's one function. Hey, here's another function. What do they have in common? What do they not have in common? Which one's greater than the other for their y-intercepts? Which one has a steeper slope? And that's what we're looking in section nine. How can we compare one function to another and see what they have in common and what do they have different? All right, that is the review for unit four. Again, we will have a test on this. Make sure you do the practice test. And if you have any questions, make sure you put those in the Google form so we can talk about them in class. And I'll catch y'all next time.